Well, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ben Gramico. I am from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we do a free monthly live class. And um, we are going to tonight talk about um, how to inspect the house exterior. So thanks for showing up. And if you have any questions, we'll have a link to our online forum so that I can answer your questions and you can um, share thoughts with everyone else. Um, So that's my name, Ben Gramico. We do a, a monthly event every month. Um, we make them live so that you can ask questions, bring your questions and ask and discuss while we're doing the class. Um, to subscribe to our newsletter would be a great idea because we announce these classes um, um, inside our monthly newsletter. So go to that URL um, nachi.org forward slash monthly newsletter and you could subscribe to our monthly newsletter, a free monthly newsletter for our members and um, non-members, contractors, inspectors and um, keep up to date and don't miss uh, an event when it comes up. And we're going to go over tips for inspecting the house exterior and we're going to go over three things, the standards of practice, the definitions, and inspection images. So before that though, I'd like to take you to this URL, natchiorg forward slash everything. And there you'll find everything you need to be successful in your home inspection business. So let's go there. move some things around. So if we go there at nachi.org forward slash everything, there you'll find everything you need to be successful. Let's open this up a little bit bigger. You can play this short video about what InterNACHI offers, but it's simply a checklist. It's a page and you can scroll down this page and it's a checklist of things that you can do to be successful in your home inspection business and taking advantage of all of the free benefits, membership benefits that we provide. So first you have to figure out where you're from. So um, if you're from one of the United States or uh, Canada or another country, you click that link and then we have a state specific or province or country specific page just for you. And after you join as a member, You'll have access to everything you need to be successful, including free, unlimited access to all of InterNACHI's online training. When you're certified, um, you will have access to the certifications that we provide, but once you're certified, you can have access to all of the continuing education, the marketing, and business services we provide as well, and we'll go over that. And we have over $75,000 worth of membership benefits. So join as a member, and you can take advantage of all of those membership benefits. And let me take you there now. So this is at nachi.org forward slash benefits. And this is the list of membership benefits that's available as soon as you join. And let me scroll down the page. So I don't know if you can see it on the right hand side. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, we're scrolling, we're scrolling. So all of these are free membership benefits as soon as you join as a member of InterNACHI have access to all of these membership benefits. And if you scroll all the way down, there are some discounts. Um, we have over 100,000 discounts provided to our members. For example, um, $25 gift card from Sam's Club, 25% uh, off of pizza, Papa John's Pizza, things like that. So let's go back to our everything page. So first, join. And then learn how to run a successful business. And remember, you are a business owner who happens to do a home inspection service. So it's very important to learn how to run a successful business. Um, many home inspectors are very good at the technical aspects of uh, being a home inspector, but um, need some additional training on running a business. So we have a home inspection business course. It's free, it's online, and it's open to everyone. 
You don't have to be a member of InterNACHI to take this home inspection business course. So go there. Um, we have an online inspection agreement system. Uh, it's that contract between you, the inspector, and your client. It's a free, electronic, uh, signable, customizable um, agreement system. We have a little um, article about how to price your fees. That's very important. How to figure out what your brand is, how to market it, and tell everyone um, what you charge for your services and the value that you provide because of that. Uh, we have a fee calculator as well. It's an online calculator. Then um, get certified. And we have over 30 certifications to choose from. Once you become a member, take your time, and we provide you the online training that you can take, learn at your own pace, and become certified. Become a certified professional inspector. Become a mold inspector. Become a pool and spa inspector. We have all of these certifications, like infrared certified, commercial inspector. And um, they're all the, the training and certifications are all online and free to members. So it's really important to join. And then once you join, you, you have a whole world of opportunity opened up for you. And then it's important, once you're certified, to brand your business, figure out who you are and what you do that's unique and special, and then market that business. Send that message out to everyone, and we help you do that. Our marketing team will design a new logo for your business, redesign an existing logo, and design and customize all of your business cards, flyers, and brochures, and all that design work is free for our certified inspectors. All you do is place an order, which is what you're going to do anyways. You're going to place an order for 5,000 business cards. Don't design it off of um, the internet somehow or on your own. Have it professionally designed. And we have a link here that shows all the work that we've done in the past for our members. And then we have the buy your home back guarantee, um, a $10,000 honor guarantee. These things you can provide once you're a certified home inspector. We have a home maintenance book, a book that um, you provide to your client and it helps them understand their responsibility as a new homeowner and to maintain the home. And we help you with um, creating a really good website. It's essential to, to, to conduct business online nowadays, so you need a website and you need to convert um, your clients. So. Um, we have that information for you as well. We have tools from our e-commerce partner, InspectorOutlet.com. And we have online training and courses and videos and articles and inspection library and graphics illustration um, library. All of that is online and free. And we help you write a great report. We have courses. We have software. We have discounted software. Once you become a member, you can um, purchase discounted software exclusively for InterNACHI -E members discounted. And we help you um, with your SEO and booming your business and inspection um, strategies, business strategies. Um, we even have a customer service and communications course to help you communicate well to your clients and take care of them. So that's again on one website, one web page, and the URL is nachi.org forward slash everything. So go there. But right now, let's continue with our live class about how to inspect the house exterior. And we're going to go over three things. I want to tell you three things. Standards of practice. Um, we're going to go over some definitions and terms. And we're going to go over inspection images. We'll do a few inspections. So the exterior wall or building envelope includes the following things that you should inspect. Roof covering, siding, obviously, the glazing, exterior walls, windows, and doors, the, their assemblies, the skylights assemblies that's on the roof, or other components that enclose the house. Now, for, the, for this, um, this training program, we're going to talk not about the roof. The house exterior, we're going to talk about everything other than the roof because in our standards of practice, we've separated, separated those two. So when you're performing a home inspection, you want to perform it according to a standards of practice. And the international standards of practice for performing a home inspection um, is at nachi.org forward slash SOP. Don't worry if you can't figure out all these URLs. You can, all, you can find it online and use our search engine. Or you can email me and I'll help you. 
So there's the standards of practice, and if you scroll down to the exterior section, um, it's separated from the roof. So prior to that, the standards of practice here um, is broken down to these systems. Roof, exterior, basement, foundation, and crawl space, heating, cooling, plumbing, electrical, fireplace, attic insulation, and ventilation, doors, windows, and interior. So the roof and the exterior, even though they're part of the billing envelope, we're going to separate them. And we're going to talk about the exterior. So let's do that now. And the standards of practice require an inspector to inspect the exterior wall covering materials, flashing and trim, all exterior doors, adjacent walkways and driveways, stairs, steps, stoops, stairways, and ramps, porches, patios, decks, balconies, and carports, railings, guards, and handrails, three separate things, eaves, soffit, and fascia, a representative number of windows, for, a sec for example, the second floor windows, I can't reach them. I can look at them from the ground. I'm not required to get a ladder and step up to the second floor or third floor windows. And the vegetation, surface drainage, retaining walls, the grading around the property where it may adversely affect the structure, especially um, related to moisture intrusion. So that's the standards of practice, briefly. And so let's go. I'm trying to move my windows out of the way, but I need them open. Um, so that's the exterior wall envelope. The primary function of siding, that's the one of the components that we need to inspect when we're inspecting exterior, obviously, is to protect the structure from um, the weather, particularly rain. The exterior wall envelope can be a weak system. Exterior walls should provide the building with a weather-resistant exterior wall envelope, but oftentimes it doesn't have that. Siding failures often result in water intrusion and major structural damage over a large section of the house. So a small component that fails in the siding may result in a disproportionately greater structural damage. One little joint that's opened up, maybe a, a piece of kickout flashing um, at the end of the gutter where the roof comes down and meets the siding, the stucco siding, or a crack in the stucco, or a, a missing flashing over the, the door, the header flashing, um, or um, an open gap where the ledger board is attached to the house. These can um, create, result in major structural damage, one small little component. So you need to inspect in detail and think of also a whole house approach because the exterior system and components of the exterior um, are interdependent with other systems and components of the house. Common sources of moisture damage include the roof and flashing. We'll just touch briefly on that tonight. Um, gutters and downspouts, soffit and fascia, landscaping and grading, that's really important, windows and doors, and siding joints, intersections of the siding. So let's go over the roof real quick. Let's do an inspection. Let's do a few. So the exterior includes the roof, but we're not going to um, think of the roof system because the standards of practice separate the roof from the exterior. But I go up on the roof as, as, um, as best as I can. You're not required to um, walk upon any roof surface according to the standards of practice. But flashing is up there. And this is um, a good um, lesson about how two systems can be interrelated. Um, the flashing joint is in between the roof system and the chimney. And that chimney could be a wood-burning fireplace. It could be the heating system. Um, it could be decorative, um, but the flashing in between those two um, is part of what you need to inspect when you're inspecting the roof and the exterior in, in general. And there's flashing around the vent pipes, any penetration. But the chimney itself, the flue, can um, cause moisture damage, can provide a, a pathway into the interior of the home and the building wall envelope. The ventilation as well, the vents on the roof, um, have, can affect the interior of the house. Um, the attic may be inadequately ventilated, for example, and cause mold and moisture problems. And the gutters, well, now we're coming to the edge of the one system into another. So the gutters collect, obviously, runoff of water from the roof, 
but they also direct that water to the exterior. And so this is the source of a lot of water problems. This is where it all begins sometimes. Um, with um, clogging, like this gutter is clogged, can cause ice dams, and ice damage is moisture intrusion into the house interior. Or it could um, allow the water to collect into the gutter and spill over, and then now that water is not controlled and it runs down the siding. So when I do the inspection, I really start with um, the gutters. The inspection of the exterior, for me, starts with the gutters. And these gutters are obviously filled with debris. Some of these gutters on this particular home were covered with um, some screening, which is great. And the soffit and fascia is inspected. Now we get to the exterior, really. But when does that start, and when does the the when does the roof start uh, stop, and when where does the exterior begin? Um, so these additional roof planes, um, I like to inspect them all, and um, you can see that, like here, I'm inspecting all the systems. There's the exterior trim, there's exterior siding, there's flashing, there's joints, and there's the roof covering materials as well. So when you're doing one system, um, using a whole house approach, you understand that you keep your eyes open for um, the connections in between systems and components. They're interdependent, interdependent upon one another. So there's the flashing in between the two systems. And here, there's a joint. So um, I want to make sure that I'm inspecting the roof and then moving slowly towards the exterior siding. And um, I like to see um, water resistant or waterproof joints flashing. So we have capping over wood components. And we have siding installed. But the siding, I think, was installed after um, the house was built um, much later because the siding is um, above the um, capping. And so there's an open joint and an opportunity for water intrusion right there. It's loosely installed. So I can see that the original trim is behind the vinyl siding here. And I got that from the roof. So when I'm coming down to the exterior, I already know, I have proof that this siding was installed um, much later than the original. And so I walk around the house. I'm doing the house exterior. I have a pattern that I set up, and I walk around the house once, twice, sometimes three or four times. Uh, the first one or two times will be with my client to tell them in general, in general terms, what's going on in the, in the exterior, but to produce a really good inspection with good data and a, write a really good report. I'll go around the house once or twice just by myself. And um, I'm taking a look at everything, where the roof intersects with the siding exterior, and looking for different materials. So I have vinyl siding, and now I have stucco, um, traditional cement stucco over a masonry structure. And you can tell that by feel and sound. And also have different materials, like wood siding materials with trim. And this siding material is... Um, is deteriorated, the, the paint needs to be touched up. And I try to focus on anything that's different. So if I have stucco and masonry and brick, I want to see that joint. Um, I want to take a look at the joints between different materials because a small opening can disproportionately create um, huge damage within the wall envelope and in the building interior. And also take a look at the windows and doors as required by the SOP. And there's a joint there that's unfinished. So the corner trim of the vinyl siding is not finished. And that paint needs to be redone. And here's a, um, a pretty good shot of what we're dealing with in this house. The vinyl siding was installed over, so you can see the, the boards, the support boards underneath, so that... Um, the vinyl siding can attach to the siding, um, the stucco, cement stucco. You have the cement stucco, that's two materials. The wood um, pieces are exposed, so they're prone to um, water damage and rot. Um, we have capping installed um, loosely. It's not sealed very well. It's fastened. And we have another material, um, the brick and the masonry joints. So there's a lot of things expanding and contracting and moving about naturally um, at different rates and providing an opportunity for openings like this one. 
So I'm taking pictures. This is actual. These are actual inspection photos that I take during the inspection. Um, by now, I've done the roof system, and I've taken probably 50 to 100 inspection um, inspection pictures. And now I'm doing the exterior, and I'll do another 100 images of the exterior. And I'm looking at different materials where those intersections come into play, where one type of material intersects with another. And the trim, the wood trim on this house needs to be touched up. And the pattern of cracking indicates to me a potential um, lead content in the paint. I'm looking for cracks in the masonry. Masonry cracks. Sometimes naturally it's okay. But sometimes um, when you get a gap or a pattern in the cracking, or excessive cracking, um, those cracks can indicate other things, uh, particularly movement. And this, these cracks are not patched up. So I have lived in a house of masonry, masonry block with stucco, cement stucco, um, parging or siding, uh, covering. And um, the cracks need to be patched up with like material. If you patch it up with like this with um, silicone, um, it turns really bad. It looks really bad, cosmetically bad. And it's not all that great and reliable. And there's missing uh, vinyl siding on uh, the side of the garage here. So you get to see the actual uh, original siding as well. And there's um, trim, wood trim, original wood trim around the windows. And they have not been painted in a long time. And they've absorbed water and um, are totally rotted in some areas. So there's a lot of pathways for water intrusion with this house exterior inspection. A lot of loose siding, a lot of different materials. And the bottom of the siding is in contact with the wood. Now the siding itself is vinyl, um, will last a very long time, won't rot, but it also covers up a few things. Ideally you want some clearance, six inches, eight inches minimum between the bottom of the siding material and um, really the top of the foundation wall and um, the ground, the grading, for a lot of things, especially in um, wet climates. Uh, I came from Pennsylvania, and so a splash would happen. So rain would come down, uh, splash up against the siding, and enter the home, actually, simply because of splash and improper clearance and grading. So it should be sloped away. Um, these areas are completely flat. They're lush green and they're damp, should be graded away. And inspection images also help me communicate to my client um, the inspection restrictions and the present condition of the, the um, landscaping and the materials. So I can't get to those windows, for example, to inspect closely because of the dense bushes. And um, this also uh, helps me describe, um, um, without words, um, the condition of the front um, bushes. Looks like there was possibly some grading or uh, replanting or something. Um, one bush I can see is right up against the siding and then this one is three feet away. Looks like somebody did some work there for some reason. And I'm taking pictures of the gra grading ex exterior. I'm looping around the house and um, I want to take pictures of restrictions. There's a fence. And also pictures of the trees um, that are close to the house in particular. And the landscaping, it does that material help absorb moisture up against the house? Um, and also slope. I want to see um, slope and swales even installed. Sometimes um, a picture like this will help me explain that this is slightly level. It's not really graded down, um, especially near the hot tub. And also the pictures of the fences, the yard. There's a underground drainage pipe. And um, any tree that's close to the house, I'll pay attention to. But even trees that are in the backyard that are falling over, um, maybe an imminent collapse would be um, appropriate to say for my client. And uh, just to remind them that they need a, maybe an arborist to come out and help them. Um, in the driveway. So now I'm doing driveways. We're required by the standards of practice to inspect the driveways, steps, stoops, walkways, particularly anything that's adjacent to the house. But I'll go all the way down um, to the street if I need to. There are dips, depressions in the asphalt, so that collects water. Um, retaining walls near the driveway should be inspected. 
Um, there's damage to the asphalt coating, uh, sealant, and also the asphalt material itself, especially on the edges. And some of the retaining wall wasn't built yet, it wasn't finished. And the puddles near the garage door are a concern. I want all of that hard surface. Hard surfaces should be sloped away from the house. Um, there's the air conditioner. Um, its position and slant um, and levelness um, indicates to me how the grading around the house is uh, stable or unstable. And um, if you see an air conditioner on a brand new home that is off level, it's probably because of the, the grading, the fill of the dirt um, has settled down. Looking for trip hazards as well. Every step I inspect, especially if it's adjacent to a door, an exterior door. And I take a look at the garage door, where the wooden garage door has joints. And this is rotted here. On the exterior, also, you get to see the other components that are attached to other systems within the house. So this is, um, for you know, northern folks, you know this. This is an oil fill and vent pipe for an oil tank. You probably have an oil-fired heating system in the house. And there's a drainage pipe. Um, this could be the, this is the condensate for an air conditioner system that was installed in the attic. This is the overflow pipe. And your client should know this. Um, it's kind of hidden. So if this is the overflow, that means that there's a, a condensate leak of some kind. Um, and it's filling up the, the catch pan, the water catch pan, in the attic. And it should be draining away. But it's really not conspicuous. You won't be able to see it. So ideally, you would see a water leak coming from the catch pan um, when you pass around the house. Um, this is kind of hidden, so it could be leaking. No one would know until something else happens. I don't know what this is, some kind of component attached to the wall, um, old um, antenna, possibly. Um, the water pipes that come through the house building envelope, um, that could be a pathway for insects, um, vermin, um, water, as well, and that's not a frost-free hose bib either, so that could freeze and burst in the winter time for northern climates. Um, the electric meter, I like to um, grab it gently and give it a little tug. It should be securely fastened to the wall. Um, this was replaced, so from a hundred meter to a two hundred meter service. That's great. Uh, the grounding wire also penetrates the wall envelope, so um, again, that could be a pathway for water penetration. And the conduits, the the electric lines. Um, going into um, the conductors, going into the service line, going into the house. That's also sometimes a pathway. Um, sometimes I find that the the line brings water into the electrical panel in the basement, but um, there wasn't any water penetration there. So the frost line, uh, frost-free hose bib should be installed. Um, the water hoses, the spigots, um, the seal cocks um, should be um, improved. Uh, it's not a uh, defect but they could freeze up in the winter time in this northern climate. When I'm expect, uh, inspecting the exterior wrapping around the house, I've got this discharge pipe. So I have to figure out what this is. Um, is it um, a sump pump? It is. Or it could be something else that some homeowner is trying to do, you know, a Band-Aid fix on something. Well, it was attached to this sump pump in the basement. And the basement had water problems, intrusion, um, had a concrete block wall. And you can see in the, just in this area that um, there's water intrusion coming into the home. Um, and when I see water penetration intrusion into the basement, crawl space or house interior, I think of what I just inspected in the exterior, starting with the roof. And remember, this house had gutters that were just filled up and grading problems. So the gutters spilled over, the grading is bad, and water tended to come into the basement. And this sump pump is not properly installed. It's simply um, a pump, a uh, submersible pump with a float, but it's in a, um, a dirt hole, so it's going to get clogged up, filled with mud. It's not reliable, not professionally installed. Um, they have a temporary flexible hose installed for the discharge. It looks like it was detached from the other hose um, that was installed, discharge pipe. Inspection restrictions in the basement. Um, indications of moisture intrusion would be the underside of the oil storage tank for you um, northern climate inspectors. Um, we store oil in tanks, large tanks, in the basement or crawl space, sometimes outside. And the bottom of those tanks, um, they're made out of metal. They could rust, and the legs could be rusted as well. 
Um, my moisture probe, it's simply a moisture meter that gives an audible sound and a um, visual indicator of light. Um, it doesn't quantify anything. Um, you can test it by licking your fingers and touching the two probes. It's just like a, a handheld moisture meter. Um, I'm not quantifying any moisture content. I'm not measuring anything. Uh, it's simply I'm looking for anomalies, um, patterns, um, the quali it's, it's qualification, not quantification. So we have a, a moisture problem here. The carpet is wet. And they have a dehumidifier as well running. So when you're inspecting the house exterior, think of a whole house approach where a house is a system of interdependent parts. When you affect one, you affect um, many others. So let's do in another inspection, keeping that whole house approach in mind. So there's a house. Um, the exterior includes the roof, but according to the standards of practice, we're going to split those two systems. But I inspect the roof. You do not have to walk upon any roof surface, according to the standards. I tend to. Um, I was in construction all my life. I installed roofs um, and repaired roofs and built houses, so I'm kind of familiar with walking upon a roof. But for me, the exterior starts at the gutter once again. This gutter is clean. And you have to think about how water hits a structure. So it hits it in a direction sometimes. And think of, um, you know, while I'm inspecting, I'm up on the roof or um, at the gutter's edge. And um, I'm thinking about how water runs off. How does water run off this roof surface? Um, it's not waterproof. No roof is waterproof, except for a flat roof. Um, they're water resistant, really. So um, sloped roof, water resistant. Look for joints, opportunities for water to penetrate in. Look at flashing areas. How does the water fall off the, the edge of the roof? Is it collected in a gutter or not? And then how does it go down the drainage? Um, wall, the exterior wall, is there a drainage wall? Is there a way for water to drain um, on the surface, and if it happens to enter the vinyl siding, say, how does it drain away from the... Um, if it happens to enter a wall assembly, is there a way for water to drain out? Look for joints where the deck attaches, the, attaches to the house. Um, light fixtures, flashing and light fixtures. Where the foundation is, there should be some flashing area or drainage pipes. So you need some site drainage. Things should be sloping away from the house. So think of water going down and hitting a window, for example. There should be two pieces of flashing at least where the header is and where the, the bottom of the window is. Okay. And this illustration you can actually use in your inspection reports for free. Members can use a ton of illustrations for their inspection reports, and they're all at nachi.org forward slash gallery. Um, so we have different types of siding materials on this house. We have capped, aluminum capped pieces of wood and stucco applied in between that trim. Um, the capping is not on top. The, the trim is not on top. It's in between. So all of these areas along here are open joints that need to be sealed because two different materials, expanding and contracting. Here's a good sealant job there between the two materials. And these are actual inspection images. I'm not um, adding extra just for this training program. Um, this is what I take a look at. Everything I take a look at, I take a picture of. And now I'm on the ground. And I'm going to wrap around the house and take pictures of inspection restrictions, but also the systems and components, particularly the site drainage, the grading. And there's a deck. From afar, it looks great. But when you get closer, you start to see cracks at the header below the deck, below the ledger board. And that can provide an opportunity for water intrusion. And you also see, I see um, joist hangers that are too small, and they're not fastened properly. Um, the ledger board is nailed at the very bottom of the ledger board. And we have a couple areas of flashing, but the flashing doesn't seem to be traditional. It's not installed properly, as expected. So the two different materials, the masonry stucco and um, coming in contact with the 
the signing materials up here and the masonry brick. It's a great opportunity to inspect and find and focus on a particular component or an opening or a failure or a potential failure. So I take hundreds of pictures of the exterior looking really good and just a picture of my hand shows to my client a couple things. One of the most important things is that I am in due diligence. I am really focused upon almost touching everything that I inspect. There's the parking, the sidewalks coming up to the, the house, the entry steps, no trip hazards, the railings are good, water faucets, electric meters attached to the house, the electric line has a very big opening. So again, water penetration, air loss, air leakage, air can uh, escape through here or actually enter, um, and also um, vermin, insects, bugs, things like that. So I'm going to follow that hole. Whenever I see a hole in the exterior, I'm going to follow it and remember it, um, and I'm going to find it on the other side. And there's the um, dryer vent exhaust as well. There's a crack there that was patched up again with sealant. I test the all, all the um, exterior receptacles, uh, making sure that they're GFCI protected. There's the air conditioner that's on the outside of the house, another system that's interdependent, connected to um, the exterior system. Discharge pipe for the condensate from the condensate pump on the inside of the house. Um, it should be discharging far away from the house. This one is not. And then when I take a look at any door or window, I tend to look at the four corners, the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So at the doorway, I want to take a look at the bottom corners. And here's the deck again. So I've looped around, and I remember I have to go back to the deck. I want to take a look at the deck. I'm a certified deck inspector. Uh, we have a couple really awesome online training courses, free to members, about how to inspect the deck, residential and commercial decks. We also have a guidebook as well, a field guide and a textbook. So the ledger board is nailed, but it's also fastened with these um, countersunk lag screws. So I'm not all that happy about that. When you countersink, you really um, um, reduce the structural integrity of the ledger board. And this one, it's one and a half inches thick, this ledger board, and it looks like it's going down about an inch. So it's really only holding on about a half an inch of material, and that's not what you need. So this is improperly installed. You have a few of them here and there. So I called this out as a, as a defect, a structural defect that needs to be attended to. The flashing is installed behind the ledger board. I can see it. It's, it's um, curled out to, to have a little drip edge, which is great. But what I want to see is the top edge of the flashing. Where is that? The posts, the railings, there's the basement, there's the the um, where now I'm on top of the deck and I'm looking at the door into the house kitchen from the deck and my focus is at the ledger board and the flashing and I don't see any flashing installed I see the siding but I don't see the top edge of the flashing so I'm concerned about the ledger board flashing at this ledger board fastening I physically move my hand on the deck rail um, it should hold 200 pounds in any direction um, the spindles should not be spaced more than four inches apart. I don't care when this house was built, really. Um, I'm, I'm focused on um, applying modern safety um, standards to the current house condition. That's what I do for my family, uh, for my um, clients who have small children, especially. So we don't want them to fall through because um, of that spacing. So the deck boards are okay. A couple more pictures. Uh, crack at the window trim, no big deal. And then um, I immediately go down into the basement and I want to find that um, ledger board area because I'm focused on it because I don't think it's it was installed properly and the flashing is up. Oh, and then I pull some insulation back, which is not required by the standards of practice, but I pull it back so I can see things like this. And this is um, mold 
and water damage and indications of water intrusion at the ledger board. So this is the the area above the foundation wall where the house, where the ledger board and the deck is attached to the house. And so the siding materials are um, rotten, water intrusion. So there's something's going on. So in, um, in my inspection reports, I use words like eminent and shall. Eminent means will occur at any moment and shall is a definite intention or obligation. So this deck shall eminently collapse is uh, a phrase that I often use when I find decks like this in poor condition. Um, there are many deck collapses. Google search for deck collapses and you'll see um, it's a serious issue that we home inspectors should be uh, aware of. And be strong in your inspection reports. Um, you know, that deck, that your cli my clients are in love with the dream home that they found, and they're going to fix anything that I find in an inspection report because they're going to buy that home. I rarely can say anything. There's hardly anything I can say to actually kill a deal. Um, that is a myth that home inspectors kill deals. It's really all about um, being strong in your inspection reports. Don't throw any softball punches, um, and don't hold back any punches, and use words that are strong especially if you find a deck that you think is not safe. So we have a really good video, um, training video, about how to inspect a deck, and it's at this URL, which is really long. So if you can um, email me, I'll reply back. But it's natchi.org forward slash deck hyphen inspections hyphen video hyphen course. natchi.org forward slash deck inspections video course with hyphens in between. And here's the attic. So I'll show you what's up going on with the attic. This is the same house, right? So I go up in the attic because systems are interdependent upon one another um, using a whole house approach. So I go up in the attic and there's mold um, in the attic. And that's possibly because of several things. Um, ventilation issues. And also, I want to know what that water intrusion is. It a roof leak? Um, do we have moisture and condensation problems, um, or does the whole house fan not work? And the bathrooms are exhausting into the attic, so the bathroom fans bring a ton of moisture uh, into the attic, and then that moisture just condenses in an unventilated um, attic space. And also, the attic access panel is essentially an open window in the ceiling of the um, thermal envelope. And it's losing air. So when, you're, when your house has a natural stack effect, all residential commercial properties have a natural stack effect where warm air rises vertically up through a stack effect, like a chimney, and it escapes where there's um, an air barrier um, missing. So um, the attic access panel is, from my, in my experience, is not well sealed and not well insulated. And you can see in this photo here that um, that black stuff there is dirt um, that is carried with the air that is escaping through this access panel. It's not mold, um, it's um, dirt. So the fiberglass, we call it filter glass, it doesn't stop airflow, it really filters it. The only thing that stops airflow um, is sealant, air leakage techniques, uh, sealant, sealing air leaks. And then you insulate on top of that. Uh, for that thermal bar barrier, and you know when you're when one house leaks air, um, that is um, conditioned air that is leaking, and that's losing money essentially. When when something leaks, it's losing money, just like ducts, old is it, existing ducts that are not mastic sealed, um, they're leaking air, and so when ducts leak, um, you are losing energy and losing money. Let's do another inspection. So here's one here, um, townhouse, looks pretty good from the outside. But again, where does one roof system stop and one exterior system begin? So I'm on the roof and um, we have flashing joint in between the two material, materials, step flashing and the counter flashing. Really well done, but also exterior stucco siding materials. Gutters, collecting the water, where does it go? Some joints here, soffit and fascia. 
Um, the joints in between the windows and the masonry exterior um, uh, has separated, so uh, that should be retouched up. And any of these roofs that are attached to the masonry exterior um, without grooving in the joints, the flashing uh, grooved in, um, is a concern for me because now this counter flashing simply needs to be sealed up. It's another maintenance issue. It's hard to reach for a typical homeowner as well. Going through, the exterior looks great. They repaired a trip hazard at the front walk. Um, front door, I take a look at the bottom corners, make sure they're in good shape. Um, look for trip hazards. I take pictures of me measuring the steps for trip hazards. There are some inspection restrictions at the utility area there. Um, there's a, a typical masonry joint uh, crack where the lintel, the still lintel, has um, absorbed some moisture, um, swelled up with some rust, and cracked some of the masonry. No big deal. Um, the exterior spigots, the water spigots, hose bibs, um, should be frost proof. There's electric meter there, secured to the wall. I'm, I want to follow the electric line going into the electrical panel. The downspout is disconnected from the underground drainage pipe. That should be fixed. It's an easy fix. Wood trim, wood in contact with masonry. Um, that's a great opportunity to inspect and focus your attention. There's an exterior drainage ditch or um, like a French drainage system on the outside of the house. That's a, a grate there and it goes into an underground pipe. You're not required to inspect underground pipes at all. Um, but um, noting them would be uh, maybe valuable to your client to understand that they may have had a puddle area there in the front yard. It collected with water, and so somebody installed some drainage to get that standing water out. Uh, main water line, shut off valve into the house. I ring every doorbell. Now I'm on the deck. Deck floorboards look great. However, the deck itself, the structure itself, actually sways back and forth. So that is not good at all. Um, it's missing a diagonal brace. Um, triangles are stronger than um, squares, so a lot of decks are built like a square, and that square turns into a parallelogram as it swings back and forth. But I actually go on the edge of the deck and I do a little, do a little dance to see if I can get the deck to move. I'd rather have the deck move with me than with my clients um, having a party on the deck. I check all the railings, force them to move. Um, and the floorboards, um, not great. They're, they're splintering a little bit. Might be hard on bare feet. The spindles um, are spaced too far apart against modern standards. Should be fixed. I test all the exterior receptacles. Deck receptacles should be GFCI protected. Check the siding while I'm there. So I'm standing on the deck and I'm looking at the door, the slider door. I want to take a look at the top corners, the header flashing, and the bottom, especially where the deck flashing is. The ledger flashing is really important when you inspect the deck. And I'm having a problem with the ledger flashing because I can see it's loose. It's loosely installed. It wasn't installed properly with the installation of the slider door. So I can actually grab the top edge of the ledger flashing and pull it away from the house and see that water can penetrate and has penetrated behind the ledger board flashing and has damaged the structural components of the house. The framing of the house is now damaged because of the ledger flashing. And when that connection is weak, that means the fasteners that hold the deck to the house are weak and are not reliable. And um, a deck collapse is imminent. So there's a really good shot. Um, somebody tried to fill up that area with some silicone, but it didn't work. Um, it's not properly installed, the flashing, and that's um, some um, uh, board insulation of the, from the structure of the house that I'm pulling away. There's, uh, there's a money shot. There's my husky screwdriver poking through uh, the ledger board, the framing of the house. It's completely rotted, rotted away. And now I can actually, I can push through my screwdriver through the ledger board area into the house interior. So that's not good. Second thing is the deck um, floorboards are not fastened properly. Um, they have metal joist hangers on the ledger board area, but on the other side, it's actually pulled away. So you have one or two nail fasteners, but the 
the board has separated from the ledger board on the outside. And so they're simply hanging in, in midair. All of these boards are simply hanging in midair. So they're fastened. I see some lag screws, and that's great. But the ledger board flashing is not installed properly. And as you can see, they're like pieces of material that were cut and installed. And um, they um, have resulted in a really poor condition, unsafe condition at the deck. Exterior drainage, the downspouts, there's where they go. Um, the house had um, fill and a very a steep slope, so they built a retaining wall past the fence. There's that retaining wall. Looks in pretty good shape. There's the air conditioner on the outside of the house. Frost-free hose bibs ne are needed. That's a dryer or bathroom exhaust, so I have to remember ah, that's back there. And then here's the other side of that ledger board flashing. This is from the basement above the foundation wall through the truss floor truss system, moving insulation with my um, hoe. It's a hoe. It's a three-tine hoe. One of the tines is curled a lot. One is somewhat, and one is straight, so I can poke, and I can curl, and I can pull with this extendable three-tine hoe. And um, I move insulation. You are not required, again, to, according to the standards of practice, to move any insulation, but I do, um, particularly if I'm aware of uh, a condition that needs to be further uh, inspected and evaluated. And here's one of the problems, um, you know, the lag screw doesn't even hit um, a structural component of the framing. So um, that is how to inspect the house exterior. Hope, hopefully I gave you some tips on how to do that. And again, um, if you want to know everything of what InterNACHI has to offer, um, we made a web page. We didn't put everything there, but a lot of the important stuff. And it's at nachi.org forward slash everything to go there. Whether you have been a member for 10 years, 20 years, or you're new to the uh, um, inspection business, or you're not a member and you're interested, um, give me an email. My name is Ben Gramico. We do this stuff every month. Um, put it online so everyone can see it and interact. And um, sign up so you don't um, miss out on anything. Keep up to date. And go to natch.org forward slash monthly newsletter to keep up to date. And let's see. And let's see if I have any questions. I don't think I have any questions from everybody. So we are going to. Um, We're going to say goodbye, everybody, and um, I will see you later. If you need anything from me, from InterNACHI, my name is Ben Gramico, and um, goodbye, everyone. See you. See you next month.